fellow alchemists, welcome back to our deep dive series on Phoenix Live View. Now, something that uh, I actually had to do recently, which was to interop with uh, JavaScript and Phoenix Live View. Now, this is something that some other people are actually doing, but nobody's actually documenting this. And I think it's important that if we're going to do a deep dive view, uh, we're going to really show how, in fact, we can interrupt with JavaScript uh, in case we want to do something to say that you know we can't do with uh, CSS, HTML, and our, our live view. Uh, one of those things could be, uh, well, in my case, was actually uploading files. And um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let's get started. Now, the one thing I want to do, which is to show a very basic idea of how this all works, it, which is to add a confirmation uh, JavaScript confirmation screen when somebody tries to delete a user. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a test uh, that we can delete a user. Pass in our con, just like we normally do. Uh, we need both of these. In fact, we need all three of these. So we're going to get a user, render the page, make sure that the user shows up. But now the difference is that when we perform a click event on the view, which the event name will be delete user, and we're going to pass in in a string format to match what we're going to have in the front end, uh, the user ID, we're going to refute that when we re-render the page, because we only will update uh, based on the event. Now we will refute that the user username will actually be there. So how we do this, we're going to run our test. And the live view web live user index. And it fails because it uh, breaks, which makes sense. Now this is something that's quite important, uh, this payload. Um, this is going to come up later on. So as you can see, all these things. But for the time being, let's just focus on what we need to do right now, which is actually handling the event. So we're missing this function called handle event with the event name, delete user, and the uh, user ID in the socket. So let's go to our user index. Now within here, find our handle event. Defining that we handle delete user defining that we pass in the user ID and we get our socket. Now with this user ID, we're going to get the user and then we're gonna delete that user. And then simply just return no reply and our socket, which is what we need to do. Now if we run our test, and all passes. And let's actually try to run this ourselves. So before this lesson, I went ahead and created three users. Now, the only thing is that within our template, we don't have that button to delete the users. So we're going to do that. So let's just create a button, type of button, the class will be a button. And it needs a face click event, which is delete user. And then Phoenix value, which is going to be how we pass in that user ID. User ID. And this is going to say delete. And then we end our tag. There we go. So let's check it. There we go, they're deleted. But as you can see, the experience, of course, is nice, but the problem is that we actually deleted that user in the database. So if we go back over here, we can see that user was deleted. It's so fast, um, and people can actually accidentally click on that button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, add in the JavaScript uh, confirmation dialog, as I talked about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to say Phoenix confirm click. 
Now if we go back and click on this, you'll see nothing happens because it doesn't understand what is a Phoenix Confirm clicked. We go to our JavaScript. And we need to actually add in the JavaScript for that. Now what I'm gonna do is because this is something I made up, I'm going to save this first, which is the event attribute. Um, in this case, it's called Phoenix Confirm Click, which is what I just created. Now within our document, we're gonna add an event listener. And now what we're gonna listen for is called Phoenix Update. So every time that Phoenix will update that page, it actually broadcasts this, or it emits this event called Phoenix colon update. And when this happens, we're going to have to do a callback. And we're going to uh, look for query selector, look for all of our elements with that attribute. Event attributes. Now for each of those, we're going to have that element. And then of course we want to add an event listener, which is a click. And then we have to have a callback on the click. Quite simply, what we're going to do is we need to have our confirmation. We're going to do this as typical, are you sure? And we're going to, so this is the little bit tricky part. It took me quite some time of Googling and, and uh, just kind of checking on my own. We need to actually get something called the target, which is actually just our Phoenix Live View uh, where it's actually mounted. So we're going to query selector, which is just going to grab the one element. And this one's going to have an attribute of data Phoenix View. That's our target element. And now the target element has all, all the connection information that we need to connect with. And we pick it back on our live socket, which comes from here. Now on the live socket, there's an owner function, which we have to first pass on the target so we can connect properly. And then there's a callback called view. Now, the view is our Phoenix Live view. So now what we need to do is we need to run this function called view dot, uh, sorry, we call a function on here on the view itself called push with reply, because what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a reply of, of, of data coming back. And then we need to send a payload with it. Now, if you guys remember, that payload is actually in here, right, we're sending our event. So here's our payload. So remember, we're sending an event. And we have a payload, which is going to be what we're sending. So that's the event is, we're going to use the get attribute function. And this one, we're going to use our event the type is a click, same over here. And now we need to send our payload, right? You can see a payload over here. For this one, or sorry, not payload, but the value, which is what gets passed in the second one. And the value is going to be, again, use our get attribute. And that one, we're gonna pass in the Phoenix value. Now that's basically it, right? There's not much else we need to do. So now, if I click on delete, I get this, are you sure? If I cancel it, nothing happens, right? Which is exactly what we want, because this is gonna return, a, uh, if we click okay, it's gonna return true. If we click false, it's going to have false. There's no else statement, so it just keeps going. Now this time, if I click delete, and then click okay, then it gets deleted everything gets sent over the wire. So that's how you can uh, basically interact with Phoenix Live View. We can piggyback on that and add some extra things. 
So this is Alan from Plangora, and uh, this is part of our series on a deep dive on Phoenix Live View. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.